Welcome back to the Grab Test Club for our lecture on fine tuning. This is part two. In the first part, we went over the value of the pieces and how to checkmate your opponent with king and queen versus king. In this lecture, we're going to be going over how to checkmate them with king and rook versus king, as well as some other nifty ideas. Alright, checkmating with the rook and king is very similar to how you do it with the queen. Uh, if it's white to move here, uh, you want to king cut the king off from as much of the board as possible. Already, he's cut off to this half of the board. Notice he can't go to this half of the board at all because your rook is stopping that. He can't cross this line, and since he can't cross this line, he can't get over here either. So, what we want to do is now try to trap him onto just these back rows. And we do that with a move like this. And then now, when we had the queen, the queen has the ability to cut him off all by itself and then bring the king in only at the very end. But the rook can't do that by itself. The rook can't keep putting him in check because then it's just, you're not going to make any progress. Instead, you need to bring in the king in immediately. Bring the king in immediately. So, just to see an example, keep going like this. And if he ever tries to attack your rook, all you do is switch it to the other side. It's that simple. And notice if he ever drops back, you just cut him off. And now he's just stuck on one row. Okay? So in this situation, let's say he just keeps going. Now, if you ever reach a position like this, and black makes the move that makes him go in front of your king, that means that you can force him back another row. Now before, say, if this king was here, and the black king was here, and our rook was here. Let me set that up. There, if you ever have this position, and it's your turn to move, if the kings are facing each other, you can force the king back another row. Like this. Now, notice the king can't run up this side of the board, because your king stops him from any of these moves. So now he has to move backwards. He can't stay along this side because the rook stops him. So he has to go back. And then now, just continuing. Notice if he goes here, now you'll have checkmate in one move. Okay? So what would happen probably is he just runs the king over and you just chase him. If he ever comes back and faces your king, then you can checkmate him. Notice that eventually he's going to run out of squares to run to. And now the only spot he can go to is here. And then it's checkmate like we said before. So very similar to the king and queen versus the king. Uh, the king and rook, uh, some basic ideas is you just need to force him to one side of the board. Uh, if you ever attack your rook, just switch to the other side. Uh, and you need to bring your king in pretty early. If he ever has your king facing each other with one square in between, uh, then you can bring your rook down another row and keep forcing him back until you can get checkmate in the last row. Finally, we're going to do a checkmate with just king and pawn versus king. Now, I'm going to warn you ahead of time that not all pawn versus king versus uh, king and pawn versus king in games are a win. A lot of them are draws. But in this situation, I'm going to show you uh, this is going to be a win. And the reason is because the white pawn is going to be able to get to the last rank and then he's going to be able to become a queen. And if you have a queen, it's just going to be just it's going to be exactly like king and queen versus king where you're going to force him to one side and then you're just going to bring your king in and then your king and queen are going to work together and it's going to be easy mate so just to show you quickly how that would happen black's not going to be able to catch up in this one just the mate. Um, when you get it on the board, you can sit down and figure it out, um, but I'd really just recommend that you play it out now, because if you ever get in a, a real game where you're short on time and you have king and queen versus just a king, um, if you've never done it before, it might take you a little time to figure out, so I recommend playing this out on your board uh, several times, even with just the rook and then s uh, some different pawn ones, just to experiment to see which ones you can win and which ones you can't, just to... Uh, to increase your skills. So, a lot of times my different students will ask me what they can do 
to improve their game. Um, a lot of them are stuck at, at the lower ratings and they just want to know a quick and easy way to, to not lose. And what I found is the easiest way to not lose is to just not give away free pieces. If you do not give away pieces for free and you take all the pieces that your opponent gives you for free, then you're going to win a vast majority of your games. What I mean by that is a lot of times I've seen games like this and then, you know, White's Bishop is attacking the Queen. Now, this Bishop is not guarded by any piece, so Black can count. The Bishop is defended zero times and he attacks it once, so that means he can win it. So if he takes it, what's going to happen? Nothing's going to happen. He got a free Bishop. And a lot of people will make that mistake. A lot of people will make the mistake of thinking that they can't take it. I don't know for what reason. And then they will do a move like this. And there's no reason to do that. Um, just count how many times you attack it and how many times it's defended. And if you can think about it in your head and decide that you're going to get more material than you lose, then it's generally a good idea to do. Uh, in this situation, Black is going to get three points and he's not going to have to give up anything. It's three free points. That's all there is. Now, I make that sound a lot easier than it is, um, because a lot of times you're not sure if you can get a piece for free. Uh, and that's just something you're going to have to work on, uh, deciding and thinking about it in your head and running through little scenarios. If I take this, he takes this, I take this, he takes this, and thinking about it in your head. Uh, chess is a game in the mind. It's not, you know, for the incapable, you need to think about some things. Um, to go through a little exercise, I'm going to show you what's something called the Scholar's Mate. Uh, and if you're new to chess, a lot of your opponents are going to try to pull this on you, and you may try to try to pull try to pull it on some of your opponents. Okay, in this position, White's Bishop and White's Queen are attacking this pawn. Now, if we count, this pawn is defended only by one piece the black king. Now, if black were smart here, he could guard that pawn with his queen, and now it's defended twice and attacked twice, so white shouldn't take it. It'd be a bad for him. But let's just say black does something stupid, and he ignores it. Now, the point is that we are attacking it twice, and it is defended once. So, we could take, and it's checkmate. Because he can't take our queen, because then he would be in check by our bishop. So, just simple counting how many times it's attacked and how many times it's defended can be very help helpful. Um, it's not always going to be that easy, um, and a lot of times there's going to be little tricks and, and things, but you're going to have to be able to recognize when situations are, are going to arise. Um, so, this probably concludes our lecture on how to get past the 300 rating. In our next lecture, we're going to talk about some more advanced strategies uh, and how to get up to around 500. Uh, but if you can just follow these, these simple ideas and counting how many times things are attacked and defended and not putting your pieces in a place where they can be taken for free, um, then you're generally going to have some good results to start out with. So I wish you luck, and I will see you on the next lecture. Goodbye.